Excellencies, Reverend Fathers, Attorney Aurora Santiago, President of the Council of the Lady of the Philippines, Cardine Community International Organizers, Friends, Ladies and Gentlemen. I have been asked to give testimony of my experiences working with Cardinal Cardine during the Second Vatican Council as the only surviving member of the International Young Christian Workers in the year 1957 to 1961 and maybe probably the last if not the last if not one of the last of the International YSW team 61 to 1964. Since I happen also to be the with Council of the Lady of the Archdiocese of Casares, I had been also asked to include some experiences of the lay apostolate in the Archdiocese of Casares, Philippines. My experiences with Cardinal Cardine at the Second International Council had its early beginning in 1957 at the International YCW Committee in Rome. As a team, we prayed and worked together. I saw in Monsignor Cardine a man with invisible faith in each and every young woman and young man. But funny, in general assemblies with young people, with their families and communities, he would be speaking, addressing assemblies of young people, he will be like an exploding bomb with electrifying efforts. And in his booming voice, declaring a truth of faith every young working boy and every young working girl is worth more than all the gold in the world. From years 1958 to 1960, as one of the Asians in the International YCW Committee, the other is a, was a Japanese, I had been tasked with the duty of visiting and initiating Wise Blue movements in all parts of Asia. Preparing for the possibilities of Wise Blue extension workers and technical assistance where needed. Monsignor Cardine wanted all these visits continued while bishops are, were in Rome, especially advising nothing without the priests. In July 1961, through Monsignor Cardine, the International Wise Review submitted to the Prefatal Commission of the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, a document, Thoughts of a Group of Wise Review Leaders and Chaplains of North and South America, Asia, Africa. It, the report had five conclusions. I shall mention only the fourth and fifth conclusion. The fourth conclusion, an appeal to priests in all countries of the world to offer their services to the laity who engage in the apostolate. The fifth conclusion, for an institution and or office in the government of the church for the lay apostolate. Today, we have the Pontifical Council of the Lady, the Dicastry of the Holy See of the Roman Curia at the service of the lay faithful. I dare say this is one of the major contributions of Monsignor Cardine to the Second Vatican Council. In February 1962, always uneducated, Monsignor Cardine wrote to all YCWs in the world. I quote what he wrote. The coming council should make us young worker leaders, 
conscious of our responsibilities in the church and in the world. Let us understand and take up our own responsibility to be able to say that the Council of 1962 is a step in our own lives of prayer and apostolate. Our own human life in the field is the field of real and specific apostolic vocation. In April 25 to 28, 1961, I, 62, this was the first of several study weeks organized by the International Young Christian Workers for seminarians and priests studying in Rome. This study week had been organized with the assistance of Reverend Father Pietro Beltrao of the Pontificia Universidad Gregoriana. The International YSW was discussed as a school, a service, and a representative body. It was hoped this will help interested priests to accept to become YSW chaplains, to help laymen and women discover the apostolic significance of everyday life. April 28 to May 4, 1962. This was a week with Monsignor Cardine, Father Marcel Ullenbrook and the College of Chaplains with the Bureau of Restraint, those elected in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in November 2 to 11, 1962. When official visits were made in Rome, the following were visited the Holy Father, Pope John XXIII. Many other cardinals were visited, but I don't remember anymore. But definitely, Monsieur Cardine, Father William Brooke, we saw visited Cardinal Forney. As a bureau, the small team of international YSW workers, working closely with Monsieur Cardine, went to the Secretariat for Congresses of Lay Apostolate. At the end of its session, whenever possible, we reviewed with Monsignor Cadine each visit. He was always solicitous, each time enabling us to continue believing more and more in the Holy Spirit. Always, Monsignor will repeat, the Spirit breathes where he will. May 2, 1962, at 9 p.m., the whole bureau where we were at the propaganda today. I had an experience that I cannot forget. The International White Review wrote to all houses of major religious congregations in Rome. We were welcomed by all. On the morning for visiting the Christian brothers, our team was at the main entrance to the auditorium. I was refused entrance. Why? Because I am a girl. They understood that the team consists only of priests and male. At the mass of the opening of the Second Vatican Council, we were praying as an international team. We prayed that the Second Vatican Council will contribute to make the Church truly light of the world, salt of the earth. Monsignor Cardine expressed the need of solidarity with the Holy Father, John XXIII, and all the bishops. On our knees, we promised to put into practice the orientation of the, of the Council. I will always remember when Monsignor Cardine solemnly declared, Go. Difficulties will become even greater because of the material cultural progress and the extension of the YCW, but also the possibilities, the riches, the results. It is faith will, that will obtain for us the necessary grace. Leaving all to God, 
we guarantee our work remains a missionary endeavor. Pope John XXIII died. Cardinal Montini became Pope Paul VI. October 11, 1962. When the Council resumed, May 7, 9, 1963, as requested, a session of the International Wife to You was again organized at Via Aurelia, Roma. The team was smaller, with Bartolo Perez for America Latina, myself, Betty Villa for Asia, Father Irwin Brook for Europe. Three French-speaking wife to leaders were asked to help. August 28, 1963, the International YSW submitted a proposal regarding the postulate of the lady to the Secretariat of the Conference de Organisation Internationale Catholique, OIC, in Rome. We distributed to the Council Fathers our wishes and desires, the Church and problems of young workers, for a human civilization, a report of the Wise Level International Council in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, and the Manifesto of the International Wise Level. April 1st to the 4th, 1964, the International Wise Level continued reaching out to seminarians and priests studying in Rome. Another pastoral session on working youth was held at Ariccia, Roma. It is in the apostolate that the mystical body of Christ, its life, its apostolicity, its influence, its mission, finds its fullest expression and realization. The lay man and the lay woman must discover God's mission in their secular life and united with the mystery of the Incarnation and the Redemption. In the Council of the Lady of the Archdiocese of Castles, it is member of the Council of the Lady of the Philippines, Sangunian ng Pilipinas. At the LICO 14th Biennial National Convention, October 28 to 13, 25, 2005, while reviewing the decrees of the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines, PCP2, there was mentioned the urgent need for guidelines for pastor councils. The Cancerous team returning to Naga City immediately worked on this felt need. After a year with the assistance of three canon lawyers in the Archdiocese, SILAC produced its publication, Christian Lady and the Paris Pastor Council. In helping write this document, I referred to Cardinal Cardine's book, Layman into action. Footnote 15. For the greatest challenge to the laity comes in his and her daily life in society and not primarily to church activities. Again, footnote 35 from the same book, Layman, Priests and Layman Working Together. It is the power of the priestly faith that will bear on the difficulties inherent in the collaboration between priest and laity. In Caceres, our parish churches are filled on Sundays. Fiestas with processions are lavishly celebrated. Lay ministries such as lectors, commentators, Eucharistic ministers, etc. are attracting professionals. Charismatic movements are increasing. Yet, our church, in particular, needs today, more than ever, the credible witness of people. Faith demands social responsibility for what one believes. 
And so, may I conclude. To Cardinal Joseph Cardine, it was always necessary and good that the official church recognizes the International Wise Review and its bureau, the team of lay people working directly and closely with Monsignor Kadai. This team represents the young Christian workers of the world and for which reason Cardinal Kadai had us meet their holiness Pope Pius XII, Pope John XXIII, and Pope Paul VI. Cardinal Joseph Cardine's biggest contribution to the Church is his invincible faith in the lay man and the lay woman, the lay faithful. When he says again and again, with all the force of his priestly grace, that the world needs lay apostles and the Church must form them. It is not the launching of new ideas that come, but the search for the kingdom of God. Cardinal Cardine asked all his life, have we wanted and prepared in every possible way an authentic lay apostolate? And for the Archdiocese of Caceres, let me conclude with the desiderata of Archbishop Leonardo Zay Legaspi. given at the General Assembly of the Council of the Laity of Cáceres on May 6, 1919.